This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from opentuition.com. So let's go through and have a look at how we account for this deferred tax, which effectively is looking at how we record the deferred tax balance on the statement of financial position, and also how we then go through and adjust the tax expense for that deferred tax accounting entry. The good news is that it's very structured in terms of how it works, in that we have a four step process to follow. And we like steps, we like methodology, don't we? And therefore, if you can follow the steps within an exam question, you're not gonna go too far wrong. Remember, the accounting comes about from IS12, the accounting standard. The accounting standard is an international accounting standard. And what you will become more aware of as you see more and more accounting standards is that these accounting standards, when they are prepared, are very much focused on the statement of financial position. You know, there is an accounting standard on fair value. So getting the fair value of assets, the fair value of liabilities correct on the statement of financial position. The argument, therefore, being that if you get the position right, the movement in the position year on year can then just go through profit or loss and OCI. So it all just takes care of itself. But the key is getting the positional focus correct first. So that's where we start. It sounds a little bit strange when we're thinking about tax and the impact on the tax expense, but our focus needs to be on the deferred tax position, okay? And whether that's an asset or a liability, and then the impact on the statement of profit or loss and the expense will then follow through, okay? So the first step is to calculate the temporary difference. Be careful, in some questions that we've seen, it has been given to you. But if not, you will need to look at the difference between the carrying value and the tax base. So the carrying value is what we've recorded on our statement of financial position using the IFRSs and IASs. The tax base is effectively saying, well, look, let's look at the tax authorities. Let's look at how they would deal with the transaction and what they would record on their financial statements. So applying their rules as if we're creating a tax balance sheet. So applying tax depreciation to the value of the asset, applying the fact that they tax things on a cash receipts basis as opposed to an accruals basis. Okay. Uh, and then the difference between the carrying value and tax base gives you your temporary difference. In our exam, I'm really confident that you will just be examined on property, plant and equipment, and then anything else will be examined in strategic business reporting. So the carrying value will just be your cost less accumulated depreciation. Your tax base will be your cost less your accumulated tax depreciation. Okay, so using that working uh, that we saw earlier. Uh, the temporary difference is the difference between the two. And that's step one completed. Step two is to work out the tax position. So the value that is going to appear within your statement of financial position. So all we do is we take the temporary difference calculated in step one and apply the tax rate. So whatever that tax rate is given to you within the question. That's what you do from an exam perspective. Take the temporary difference and multiply it by whatever figure you're given. Uh, just note, technically, the tax rate that we will apply should be the tax rate that we expect the transaction to be settled at uh, as we continue using that asset. So if there is a reduction in the tax expense or the tax rate, I should say, in the future, then we would apply that reduced future tax rate if that has been processed through the governments. However, again, I just don't think that's going to be an issue here. You'll be calculating the temporary difference, you'll be given the tax rate, multiply one by the other. That gives us the figure on the SFP. We then need to determine whether that's a closing asset or closing liability, which is done in step three. Okay. And again, there are rules, which is why some students tend to enjoy deferred tax ultimately, because you've got these rules that we can go through there and follow. Okay. So you have a deferred tax liability if your carrying value is greater than your tax base. 
fact. Learn it, commit it to memory. Carrying value greater than tax based deferred tax liability. Why? Why have we got a, a deferred tax liability? Well, the reason why you can go back and have a look at the previous example that we did without deferred tax, because if your tax base is lower than the carrying value, that must be because we've claimed large capital allowances or tax depreciation early in the asset's life. If we've claimed large amounts of tax depreciation early in the asset's life, then there will be less to claim in the future. And if there is less to claim in the future, then we will be paying more tax, okay, because we have less of a future allowance. So therefore, we will be paying more tax. If we're paying more tax, we have a liability, don't we? Okay. Uh, we have an obligation. But I've got to be careful in saying that because technically we don't have an obligation. Okay. We don't have to pay the tax. We could sell the asset, couldn't we? But uh, there is from an accounting perspective, a deferred tax liability if the carrying value is greater than the tax base because we're going to be claiming less capital allowances in the future and therefore paying more tax. Just notes, we have seen it in some multiple choice questions whereby uh, the examiner refers to the temporary difference as a taxable temporary difference. So instead of getting you to calculate the carrying value and the tax base, they just give you the temporary difference. Uh, if it's a taxable temporary difference, you get a deferred tax liability when you multiply the difference by the tax rate. Conversely, uh, if the carrying value is less than the tax base, you've got yourself a deferred tax asset. And the reason there is that your tax base is higher because you haven't claimed as many capital allowances up front. You're going to claim more of them later. And if you claim more of them later, you'll be paying less tax. If you're paying less tax, you are generating a saving in tax. That saving is beneficial and beneficial things within the statement of financial position are referred to as assets. So you would have a deferred tax asset. However, the likelihood is, is that for capital allowances and accumulated depreciation, uh, you will see a deferred tax liability. Uh, another small point, just to note, uh, if the carrying value is less than the tax base and you have that deferred tax asset, again, just note, uh, if you're given the temporary difference and it refers to it as a deductible temporary difference, then that is because you have a deferred tax asset when you take the tax rate and multiply it by that temporary difference. Step three, done. Okay. You now move into the fourth step. And I think this, it's not the most important, but it's the one that you really need to understand to make sure that you get things right within your published company accounts. Because we've dealt with the position side. We've calculated the position in step two. We've worked out whether it's an asset or a liability in step three. So the figure from step three appears on the SFP. Likely to be a deferred tax liability. We've ignored, though, the performance statement. We've ignored profit or loss, haven't we? Well, what we said is that IFRSs are position focused. So we've got our positional focus. We've got that correct in step three. To get the profit or loss impact, we need to look at the movement in that deferred tax position. Yeah, so that's key. The movement from the opening to the closing will then go through there and give you what then happens with regard to the tax expense through profit or loss. So what you've got is you look at the closing position, you look at the opening position. And if there is an increase in deferred tax, you credit your deferred tax provision on the statement of financial position and debit your tax expense. So if the liability is increased, there is an increase in your tax expense. So whatever tax expense you've recorded with regards to current tax, you add on this movement, this increase in the deferred tax position. Conversely, if there is then a reduction 
in your deferred tax position, you debit that deferred tax liability, thus reducing it. And you go through there and credit your tax expense. So remember, a reduction in a liability is income effectively within statement of profit or loss. If you go back to the definition of income within the framework, you're scurrying back within your notes now, looking at the definition of income. Uh, it was the increase in an asset or reduction in a liability. So if I've got a decrease in my deferred tax liability, I will debit the deferred tax liability and credit my income tax expense, therefore reducing the tax expense that we've already recorded due to our current tax. <sighs> yeah, you can see how difficult it can get. There's a lot going on, isn't there? But the good thing that I like about it, it there is good structure to it. There's a process that we can follow. And if you can follow that process, well, you'll do well within an exam question. So let's go through and make sure that we can understand what we've done by in the next video, having a look at that example that we've done previously, but incorporating deferred tax within it.